All right, so we're going to construct a cold frame around our existing garden box. Because the size of our box is already predetermined, we're going to need to add however many inches, um, which in this case is going to be eight inches, um, to our total measurement to create the type of uh, box that we need. So on this side, it's going to be two feet high, and on this side, it's going to be three feet high. That'll give us a slope of one foot over four feet. This is amazing. <laughs> it should be adequate enough to run off rainwater. And our box is only going to be six feet long. It's going to be four feet wide. And it's going to be real simple. We're just going to create three points on either side and connect those points with long boards. Six foot on the long side, four foot on the short side. And then wrap it with plastic and leave the top loose so we can unroll it. So let's get to work. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to mark out the lengths of wood that I need. We've already made our cuts um, by ripping two by fours and two by sixes into basically inch and a half by inch and a half pieces um, using two by twos, or you can actually just go to the store and buy two by twos, uh, but we've chosen the cheaper route. Plus we have friends who have spare lumber. If you've got any friends that got some spare lumber, it's a great idea to say, hey, can I use some? And then go ahead and rip those down. You're gonna need a table saw, or you can use a skill saw. It's gonna take a little bit longer though. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start cutting now. Um, normally, I would suggest that you would cut on top of a table on a flat surface at uh, right around waist height. But because I'm a professional carpenter, don't do this at home if you're not experienced with how to use a skill saw and how to make cuts. Always make your cut, the side that you're cutting off, to where it'll lop off and drop. If you don't, the blade will bind. start by screwing in the posts um, to the corners and then uh, and then we'll start doing the tops so let's get going no idea and I'm using exterior screws so that they don't rust out carpenter Pull the trigger all the way. just pretty much finished assembling the box. Um, a few things that you probably should take into consideration is that you're not building a house and that not everything has to be completely perfect. Um, the height doesn't have to be perfect or the length or how the boards are situated in there. One thing you might want to consider though is how wide your box is and take in consideration the thickness of the boards. So you're going to want to add either an inch and a half or three inches depending on how you're setting your boards. Okay. Alright, so this is just a, a clear Bisqueen 6 mil plastic and it comes in various different sizes. Uh, we're going to make a cut at 10 feet 6 inches. So that'll give us 6 feet plus 4 feet and a little extra and then cut the plastic yeah. in half after that. Alright, we're about to staple on the last section. We've already got the first one. Just a, a regular staple gun takes T50 staples will do the job. You don't need a lot because if you want to use this again you don't want to have a bunch of holes. All right it's going to be important to note that there is a center bar that goes across. It's going to be mostly to split the weight not only the plastic but also of the piece of wood that we're going to use to hold the plastic over the front of it tight down. So we're going to fold the plastic over and staple it so it'll so it'll hold the plastic down like this and create a nice even surface for the rain to shed off of. And you're going to want to fold your plastic over before you staple it. Well, it looks like we are blessed with a little bit of rain 
so as you can see it's shedding water the way it's supposed to so that's a good thing